All right, well, thanks very much for that introduction. Um, and thanks very much to uh, everyone at PyData for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Um, it's been a pretty great conference so far. And uh, I thought it m my talk might be a little bit uh, weird and out of the ordinary, although I feel like all the talks have been pretty eclectic, so maybe I won't stand out as much. But um, today, basically, I'm, I'm here to champion a, a piece of software called Avoplot. And uh, Avoplot is a tool being developed by our research group at the University of Cambridge. And it aims to make scientific data visualization easier, particularly for those people who are less computer literate, less coding capable. But also, we hope that it will be a tool that can be used by the Avid programmer as well. Um, it's written entirely in Python, and it makes use of the very excellent matplotlib plotting library, which is why we like to think of it as life after matplotlib, because um, we love matplotlib. And our aim here is not to reinvent the wheel, not to make a new plotting library, but rather to use the tools that are there um, to let people do more with it and make it easier for people to use it. Even people who, like I said, can't code or can't code very well. So uh, first off, I'm going to start out by kind of giving you an introduction to, to who I am and what I'm doing up here talking to you today. Um, so yeah, before I talk about the software, uh, I'll introduce myself and my team uh, to give you an idea of where we're coming from. Uh, because ultimately, the software has come from that same place. So it gives you a bit of history. So my research group is known as the Cambridge Volcanology Group. Uh, we're a group of PhD students from around the world studying volcanoes around the world, hence the gas mask. Uh, so yeah, that's me behind the gas mask. Um, and we're all using vastly different techniques to study volcanoes in different ways. Um, gathering all sorts of data um, and using those data in, data in different ways. And we all come from different backgrounds, uh, both scientifically speaking and uh, IT speaking. So um, some people in our group have zero computer programming skills and some people um, have very high computer programming skills. Uh, personally, I don't have a very strong computer science background. I will tell you that right now. And I will remind you that throughout the talk that actually this guy actually wrote 99.9% .9 of the program I'm going to talk to you about today. So of course, if you have any problems with it, you can contact the developer. Um, about two years ago, I started coding Python because of this guy, Niall Peters. Uh, before that, my coding experience was basically HTML and Visual Basic. Um, so he taught me how to work with data in a language like Python, which is very good for doing math and science. Um, but now I've been able to, to help him a little bit. Like I said, the 0.1% of the code that wasn't by him was by me. Um, so I've grown a lot in that two years. And uh, I think that the fact that I'm able to give this talk to you today sort of embodies the idea of Avoplot. That is, someone who's not uh, an awesome computer programmer, someone who just has basic skills but knows what they want to do and has a problem to achieve and some data to work with. Uh, can essentially make their own computer program that has a GUI and is powered by Python and uses the very excellent libraries that Python already has to offer. So yeah, I guess the point is sort of, if I can do it, anyone can. That's my message. And I also wanted to briefly mention the Software Sustainability Institute, um, who has a presence here today. Um, so there's two people sitting in the back that if you have any questions about the SSI, you should speak with them. Um, and I recommend that you check them out. They uh, uh, sponsored me in 2013 as a fellow, um, gave me an allowance of 3,000 pounds to travel to conferences and go to workshops and things like that. Um, and they can be a fantastic tool for people who want to either publish scientific uh, uh, programs or uh, learn how to use different programs and different tools and organize workshops and things like that. So I would encourage you to do that if you're interested. OK, so now back to the story of Avoplot. So as I said, my, uh, my team is a group of volcanologists. And, and the Avoplot program really grew, grew from the need to solve real world problems. So we like to think that that's where we're coming from, is having real world problems and, and giving you an easy solution to work with them. So Avoplot started in field work in Chile uh, a couple years ago, and this is a uh, picture of an erupting volcano called Puyehue Cordon Calle in southern Chile. Um, you probably haven't heard of it. That's because it's in the southern hemisphere, and no one really noticed up here. But it's kind of the equivalent of the southern hemisphere equivalent of the Iceland eruption. So the ash from, from this volcano made its way into the stratosphere and actually circumnavigated the entire globe. So that means it traveled all the way around to the other side of the Earth, canceled flights in New Zealand, and then kept going and ended up back in Chile where it started. 
So this was a huge event. And uh, while we were there, we brought all kinds of equipment. So here's some of uh, the devices that we use, which are uh, some, everything from standard video cameras uh, to spectrometers that look at the, the gases and the ash coming out of the, the volcanic plume uh, in an attempt to measure how much stuff is coming out of the volcano. Um, so again, we have all these different, it's called multi-parameter monitoring, where you have all these different tools looking at the same thing at the same time. Um, and we had a, a, a multitude of tools to help us do that um, that were mostly written by postdocs and PhD students and staff years ago. Um, so we had all this legacy code that didn't work well together, and to be honest, none of it really worked well at all. Um, for example, many of the, of the tools we were using, you have to physically edit the scripts in a text editor in the field to do different parts of the program that you want to run the equipment, um, which is not easy in the field or with gloves on. And it's also not easy for those of our group who had not done any computer programming before. So there was a huge barrier for them. Um, in addition, there's a, there's a big need for real-time data visualization. So we have data streaming into our computers. We want to be able to look at it right away and see in the field real time and maybe even do some small bits of processing on that data to see what we're actually looking at. And that can be very important on field work when very often as scientists our field work is sort of a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? So we're in the field and we need to capture what's happening in that moment. And for example, with the, uh, with the old scripts that we used to use, uh, more often than not our spectrometers would be pointed somewhere not in the plume at all. It would be pointed out in space, and so we would end up with data that was nothing at all. We would spend an entire day in the field and come back and realize, oops, we actually didn't measure anything. So being able to look at your data as it's coming in is, is really important. Uh, the other place where uh, Avloplot was heavily developed was in a rather chilly garage in Antarctica. So this is uh, the Lower Erebus Hut, which is a uh, small science station about the size of a garage on the side of an active volcano in Antarctica. And this is where much of the programming was done by that guy, with the big arrow, Nile. Um, and I'll, I'll quote him here by saying, if you think that the code is messy, then think about how hard it is to type with gloves on. <laughs> so this is, so at Erebus uh, Volcano, uh, we have a large team there, about 12 people are, are, are at the base every, every year. And everyone is doing completely different things. So um, even, even more so than at that big volcano in Chile, where we have people uh, using infrared cameras to look at the active lava lake that's in the volcanic crater. We have people looking at the gas plume. Uh, we have people taking LIDAR data of the ice caves that are on the ice around the volcano. We have all kinds of different studies happening there. Um, so this is where a lot of our custom tools Hap happened and were developed. It's because we had all of these needs that arose, and as a need for some new data processing arose, we thought, hey, we can, we can add this to, to Avaloplot. We'll use this, this plotting program we have, um, which I'll eventually show you, I promise. Um, and we can add, add this feature to work with this specific data set. So the features have, have largely been a result of, of a direct need. Um, so Avoplot started its life as a, as a tool for, for visualizing gas data, so the stuff that we were doing here. But eventually, um, we found that we were reusing bits of code from here and there, and that we were able to make more and more tools and add on more and more features. All right, so, so here we are with all this data and bits of Python code kind of scattered about um, and trying to work through it all. Um, but event eventually, this would all build into something greater, which is Avalplot, and this is our logo here. Very nice avocado. So that was basically the brief history of the beginnings of this project. So a bunch of volcanologists running around the world at various volcanoes, collecting data and kind of trying to figure out what to do with it, and realizing that maybe it could be better, and then realizing maybe other people could use this tool as well. So next I'm going to talk a bit about sort of the, the more broad data handling problems faced by scientists in general. Um, and I, I suppose that applies to non-scientists as well. Handling data is, is a thing across many disciplines. Um, and our examples come from personal experience, but like I said, they're, they're widely applicable. Um, and then we'll kind of combine that with a look at what Python tools are already available and what we can do with those tools. Um, and then finally, we'll talk about the Avalplot software itself, uh, what it aims to achieve, 
where we are in the current design um, and what we'd like to see in the future and ideas for implementing new, new features. So by its nature, science is data-driven. Um, as such, most of chemistry, physics, biology, geology uh, can be broken down into, into a few key steps. So firstly, you collect a bunch of data somewhere. Um, often many different types of data for a single project. Um, and this, this in particular is the highly specialized step. Um, so your data is always going to be very specific and you might think that I, I, I need a really specialized tool to work with this because um, it's not easy as, as easy as just dumping it in a spreadsheet. But then, of course, you import your data into some kind of analysis software. And this, uh, these are generally very, these are often very general tools like spreadsheets or plain text data files, CSV files. Um, but again, can be quite specialized, like a binary spectrum file, for example. So then you want to do some processing on your data. Um, and as with the data import, this can be very general, um, like fitting a line or a curve to your data, or again, something very specialized, like fitting backgrounds or um, uh, modifying your, your curve in some way. Um, and finally, you might iterate between the processing and visualization steps uh, enough times until you get a product that, that looks the way you want it to look, either for publication or for looking at the data in a visual way to try to figure out what's going on. So, okay, so what's the problem then? So we need a general tool that can be used for specialized um, data sets. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. But the second point, I think, is a bit, is a bit more subtle. Um, so that there's, no, there's no point in having to, to repeat the work of specialization uh, each time you have to, to process new data. Um, and there already may be tools used to accomplish this. So spreadsheets can be used as templates to make specializations reusable. And of course, like I said, we have a, a ton of Python tools to do this, right? Um, so you might say, well, Python solves this problem already, so, so why are we even looking at this? I mean, it's a general tool. It can deal with highly specialized cases. Um, you can import general data like CSV using CSV module. Um, specialized cases can be handled using custom written code for your particular data set. Um, and the same can be said for the processing and visualization steps. There already exist these tools um, to, to, to work with the data. And there's, of course, many, many more. This is an example of, of some of the modules that, that we use in our group. Okay, so if Python already answers our question, then, then what's the real problem here that we want to address? Um, as I mentioned before, a lot of scientists are not programmers. Um, so although some will happily write a script to achieve their task, others might find that completely you know, unapproachable. Um, so I'll, I'll give you one, one quick example. Uh, a member of our group named Kelby, who's a brilliant guy, but not so brilliant when it comes to IT stuff. Um, for example, I once literally witnessed him open a browser, and in the, uh, the search box, which is a Google search, he typed in Yahoo, and then clicked the first result on Google, which was yahoo.com. And then in the Yahoo search box, he typed Yahoo Mail, and then he clicked the first link. And that's how we got to his mail. That's how we got to his email. Was by <laughs> and I was just like watching in horror as this was happening. Um, and this is a guy who was using all the tools that we were in the field and trying to work with these scripts. And it was just not something he had done before. And so there's a huge learning curve for him, right? Like he knew how to, how to work with the data on a more uh, general level. But when it came to, OK, how do I, you know, what, what do I type to get this to happen? It was, it was just like, it would have taken him 10 years to finish his PhD because he had to learn so much more just to catch up to that. Um, so again, like in our group, we have this huge range of people, this guy Niall who wrote this software all the way down to Kelby who searches Yahoo to get to his email. Um, the other thing about scientists is that they're, all, they're typically in a hurry. Uh, time is short. And so writing a specific code that's going to have a really nice interface that's going to be reusable is hard, and we don't like to do it. It's easy to just quickly code something up, use it for what we need, and then, yeah, maybe save it and come back to it later. But to be honest, you know that if you come back to your code that you wrote two months ago, you're not going to have any idea what it did unless you actually documented it well. Um, and so, yeah, so scripting, in addition, can be a frustrating way to visualize data. Um, so like we do have this great tool matplotlib uh, and pyplot, and you might do, you know, pyplot.plot your, your data. Finally, you have this big script, and then you, you plot it, and it looks beautiful. 
oh, but uh, I think I want to change the color of those dots or the shape, or I want to change the, the, the axes, or I want to change the title. You have to go back and rerun your entire script uh, to just to change that one little thing. And you might have to iterate over that several times until you get what you finally want. So it's just a, it's a frustrating way to approach a visual problem uh, with a scripting backend. So Avalplot aims to sort of address these questions in a few different ways. Uh, the first of which, the first very obvious thing is that it's essentially a GUI front end to Matplotlib. So it has all the functionality of Matplotlib. You can import um, various types of data using yeah, text, CSV files. You can manually, manually type it in. Um, and then you see your, your plot in this wonderful Matplotlib window, and you can change the colors and the fonts and the styles and everything. So it just makes that step easier. Um, and in addition, it has basic data processing capabilities. And this is something that's definitely extensible. And we are trying to add tons more um, features on this, this end of things. Um, but for example, fitting a line is, to your data is one thing we can do, or fitting a Gaussian curve to something, things like that. And you can do that right within the graphical interface, which is nice. Um, again, like, like I said, you know, moving things around or changing your, your plot is just made easier in a drag and drop interface. I mean, we love scripting, of course, but sometimes you just want to point and click. Um, in addition, Avalplot is very easily customizable. So I'm going to talk in a bit about plugins, which is a huge part of Avalplot, um, and probably my favorite thing about it. Basically, it's a framework for scientists to create their own processing tools. So someone, even with minimal uh, computer skills, minimal coding skills, can create essentially their own software program that has a GUI and runs with Python in the background. So a set of very powerful tools. So here's a, basically the anatomy of, of our program and uh, the three sort of main points that we like to, that we like to think that we try to uh, accomplish. So like I said, the first thing is the GUI interface, fantastic. Um, the second thing is plugins. Um, like, so like I was just mentioning, um, you can write a plugin for your specific data type to import specific data from whatever kind of file you have. You can work with it. You can do all of the processing either behind the scenes or at the click of a button. Um, and the third thing is I'm going to talk about as well is our scripting interface, which is very new, uh, but we hope to expand upon this. So if you like to work in, uh, mostly in a script interface rather than a GUI, that's fine too. And we think that this uh, feature is going to be very good for uh, the more advanced programmers. So you can write a program, instead of calling uh, pyplot.plot, you might call avoplot.plot. And then instead of opening your graph in a matplotlib window, it will open it in Avalplot. So you can do your whole script, run everything just like you normally would, and just import Avalplot as a module, open up Avalplot, and then rearrange your axes, and make your, your graph look nice, look the way you want it to look. OK, so I showed you, I felt bad for putting up so many slides filled with text. So I wanted to have a quick uh, story to get your attention back. So, so why is it called Avoplot? Well, it's so named based on the ramblings of someone who would actually eventually become one of his end users. Um, a guy called Talvin Barney, who's another member of our research group, uh, he, he's a big fan of things like Mathematica, um, which not to say Mathematica isn't great, but he's a fan of this on the basis that if it costs money, it's better. Um, and he <laughs> decided to go on to a big rant and, on a very hot day in the middle of the Ethiopian desert a few years ago <laughs> and explained to Niall, the guy who wrote this program, why open source is bad and why paying for programs is good. And so he was, he, this is paraphrasing, but to the best of our memory, he said something like, open source software is written by a bunch of hippies living in a commune in Palo Alto with their beards down to their socks and sandals living on nothing but organic avocados. Oh, look at me, I'm so moral. So, in uh, recognition of Telvin's epic rant on how much he hated open source software and hated using Linux and hated having to check the man pages and write a wrapper for his USB driver, uh, we named it after, after that, Avoplot. <laughs> and like I said before, this guy is now actually using Avoplot. So, and he's scripting in Python now as well. So we've, we've converted him, I think. OK, so finally, a screenshot. So this is what Avoplot looks like. This is the GUI. 
um, and I'll kind of take you through um, take you through the screenshot a bit to show you sort of the different sections. So we've broken it down into panels and also tabs as well. So you can open as many panels as you like. Um, well, as many panels until the program crashes, but you know, uh, in addition to as many tabs as you like as well. Um, so you can look at, for example, um, this is some data that, that we look at um, at volcanoes when we're looking at, at the gases coming out of volcanoes. And these are the kind of data that are good to see in real time. So this is, a, this is just running a script that uh, will pull data from a, from a folder. We'll continually watch the folder for new, new files. Whenever a new file is written, it'll update these graphs. And then we can watch what's happening in the volcano and be sure that our instrument is actually pointed where we want it to be pointed. Um, so the current, the current phase of, of development is that it's very early. Um, but we have a stable release, which is available on Google Code. Um, and for the re stable release, we focus on implementing uh, a few number of fully workable uh, features, rather than a bunch of half-baked ideas, although we have many of those in the works, too. Um, for the back end, we have ditched the Matplotlib back end, and we actually use WX. So you do have to have that um, installed. And OK, so yeah. Um, so when you're writing, when you're writing, uh, if you're writing a plugin, for example, for for Avalplot, um, you you work in like I said, you have these panels, and um, so the the navigation panel you can select either which which window you're looking at or which tab or which you can plot multiple lines, for example, in a single graph, so you could select which line, uh, and then the control panel will change depending on which thing you've selected in the navigation panel. So if you've selected a particular line, you might have tools to, to you know, or a particular data set, you might have tools to fit a curve or to change the color of the line um, or to perform math and processing on that data. If you've selected the, the whole subplot, then you'll have these control panel tools where you can change like the, the axes and the title and the, um, the color of the plot window and things like that. Oh, and notice that all of the matplotlib tools are re readily available. So like the ones you know and love, the zoom and pan and home and all that are just right there on the top. OK, and then something I mentioned before that we're really excited about is this brand new scripting interface, which we just released with the, the latest release. Um, and so as well as this basic GUI, um, you, you, can, you can work with Avoplot uh, from a scripting interface. Um, and although only a few commands are, are currently um, implemented, but we hope to, to grow it. And also one thing we're hoping to, to achieve here is maybe get, get more of you developing on it as well, which would be fantastic. So it's basically designed to mimic pi, the PyPlot interface, um, making it really simple for people who already use Matplotlib to just, like I said, import Avoplot and plot it, and then it opens your plot in, uh, in our program instead. Um, and so that if you have existing scripts, for example, they can already be changed very easily. Uh, plugins, which I think is is what makes this really powerful um, and very very usable for people who maybe aren't um, as avid as coders, but maybe just starting out, is uh, is is the fact that it's a plugin interface. Um, so the most simple the most simple plugin, like just a few lines of code, um, will allow unsupported data files uh, to be loaded, like by a point and click of like file new. Um, but more complex ones allow you to find, define your own access, specific data series types, um, specific data processing tools, you know, adding buttons and things like that. Um, plugins are distributed using distutils. Um, and a bunch of, so, so loads, of, loads of scripts, like quick and dirty scripts are written by scientists every day, right? But we'd like to offer Avoplot as sort of a framework for them to build better reusable code that can then also be used by others. And in, in addition, you get this GUI interface. Um, so a lot of the hard work, so like I said, writing, writing good reusable programs with, that look really nice is hard, and it takes a lot of time. Um, but if with Avoplot, we'd like to think that we've sort of set up the, the framework for you. So all the things are there, and you kind of plug and play. Uh, I mean, it can be very, very, very simple or, or very complex, but you can basically just plug and play your specific data types and name your axes and things like that. And then if you have tons of data that you want to work with, 
run your pl your plugin on, on all of these data. And um, in fact, then hopefully other people in your field can use that as well. So the thing about the thing about the plugins I think is is really important is the fact that it's it's less like a traditional plugin interface where maybe you, you've written a plugin and you've added some kind of functionality to the main program. Instead, really, uh, the plugins work from the very, very top level. Um, so file new, you choose right from the file new menu which plugin you're using to open a file. And so it, the, the plugin will, will interact with the data that you import right away from the very top level. And it will always give you the commands specific to that plugin, which are specific to your data type. And so really, a plugin is like writing your own program that just sits on top of Avoplot. So you can write what's essentially its own software program and very easily with a, with a nice GUI and very powerful tools behind it. So despite being at such an early stage of development still, um, Avoplot is, is currently being used by our group. Um, this is the guy who, who searches Yahoo for his mail. And he's, um, <laughs> he's doing a, uh, a walking traverse using a spectrometer that's on the back of his helmet. So he's walking on the rim of a volcano measuring the gases that are above his head. So he's actually up here. This is the Villarica volcano in Chile. Um, and then our, the other half of our team would be on the ground uh, a couple kilometers away from the volcano at the same time but with these instruments pointed at the same stuff. So again, we have this multi-parameter approach where we have tons of different instruments looking um, at the same thing. And um, so like I said, our, our first version of Avoplot or what would become Avoplot was a tool um, for this specific kind of data. Um, and um, the speed and ease of making, making plots has, has shown us really this has been a really uh, very, very useful, uh, useful tool for sorting through the, the gigabytes of multi-instrument data that we have um, and to identify specific periods of time that are interesting. Um, so one, one more quick example of what a plugin can be um, is one that I wrote myself. So again, I want to sort of champion the fact that I'm a novice coder, and yet I was able to write a plugin that's essentially my own computer program um, that's been a very powerful tool for me in my research. So the data that I, that I use often look like this, the, the dark blue line. And uh, what I need to be able to do is fit background curves beneath the data to subtract out um, a background from, to get the real data, subtract out the noise. Um, and the way this is traditionally done by people in my field, believe it or not, is by printing these out on paper and drawing curves with a pen or pencil and then measuring them with a ruler. And that sucks when you have hundreds of these things. Um, and in fact, my, uh, my, my sort of inspiration to write this thing, because I, I was afraid of, you know, I could do a little bit of Python, use IPython, do some math and stuff, great. Um, but I was afraid to think I couldn't, you know, I can't write a program. I don't know what I'm doing. And Niall, the guy who, who wrote Avoplot, caught me um, printing out a bunch of these things. He's like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, that's just how it's done, you know? And he's like, no, no, no. We, we, we can make this better. So um, this is, I was able to use his examples that he has up um, on the Google code page and um, basically build my own program from scratch. And now I've used that throughout my PhD. So quickly, a, a few thoughts about the future of, of Avoplot and really bringing home the idea of why we think data visualization can be made better, um, even with the existing tools that are already there, which are great. So this is uh, to one set of data. But on the left is the same as what's plotted here. Um, and if I asked you to pick out the anomalous point, uh, I think you might choose to look at the, the plot here. I think if, if I gave you this set of data, you wouldn't know which one was which. But when you look at it in a visual space, you can say, okay, it's right there. This is the point that we need. Um, and I think that that kind of, it's a simple example, of course, but it sort of embodies the idea behind Avoplot, which is uh, so much of our data is in numbers space, it's in spreadsheets, um, which is, has been traditionally great for working with all different kinds of data. It's versatile in general, but if, looking at our data in a visual way can be so much more powerful. Why are we always stuck in this number space? So we're, hope, we're hopeful that, that this library of plugins that we're slowly building are going to be able to help people and that 
the people will help develop on it and make their own specialized tools, and then eventually we'll, uh, we'll have a really uh, powerful, extensive database. OK, so the program works, sort of. It's, in an, early, it's an early release, but it's a stable release. Um, and we like to think that it's useful, but we're, we're desperately in need of more developers. So at the moment, it's basically Nile and myself. Um, and we don't have the time to, to do all of the things that we would like to do with the program. So we would hope that people would sign on, um, get information from our develop developers list, and maybe be able to use it in their own research. We would love to see more people using it in different ways that we never thought possible. And so um, technical questions can be sent to the developer. Um, and you can check out the program. You can download it now and start using it. Um, or you can join the developers list, which is linked on the homepage of the Google code. Um, and I will stop there and take any questions that you may have. <laughs>